Hi, my name is Gabriel Sanfira and today I'll be showing you a demo of Coriolis. Coriolis is our cloud migration and disaster recovery as a service software. We'll be migrating one virtual machine instance from OpenStack running KVM to Branchos Harvester. Harvester is a, um, a, a hyperconverged infrastructure project based on Kubernetes and KubeVirt. If you'd like to know more about Ra uh, Rancher's Harvester, go to github.com slash rancher slash harvester. Here you'll find information about it and what it is and how it works. If you'd like to know more about Coriolis and its architecture, please head over to our website at cloudbase.it slash Coriolis. Here you'll find information regarding its architecture, the various clouds it supports, pricing, uh, contact information, and a bunch of demos that you can uh, watch if you'd like. Now, before we go into the demo, I'd like to give you a tour of the environment that we're, we'll be working with. So here we have a harvester deployment. Uh, this is deployed on a uh, an Intel NUC running a Core i5, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a network connection of 1 gigabit. It's not very powerful hardware, but it will do for this demo. Here we have an OpenStack deployment running on similar hardware. And this is what we'll be migrating from. We have a few instances here, uh, and we'll be migrating the OpenSUSE instance using Coriolis, our cloud migration tool. So let's log into Coriolis as well, give you a little tour. This is the dashboard. This is the first thing you see when you log in. It gives you an overview of your Coriolis deployment and a, a, few, a little bit of information about what's going on inside of it. Most users will want to add a new endpoint once they log into a freshly deployed Coriolis appliance. So to do that, you simply click on New Endpoint. Choose from the available plugins. Let's go with KubeVirt. Give it a name. Point it to a kubeconfig file. Click Validate and Save. And at this point, Coriolis will go out, contact the a Kubernetes deployment and make sure the information you've provided is correct. You can add multiple endpoints or view available endpoints in your cloud endpoints um, uh, section. Now, to detail a little bit more about cloud endpoints, cloud endpoints are essentially connection information you give to Coriolis for Coriolis to be able to export or import your instances. We have uh, endpoint information for OpenStack and this endpoint in particular is what we'll be migrating from. So let's validate it to make sure the information is correct. And it is. And we'll be migrating to the harvester endpoint. Let's validate it. Perfect. So we're good to go. The next thing we do is we go to replicas. Now, there are two modes of operation in Coriolis. You can do migrations, simple migrations, or replicas. Migrations are a one-off operation where um, you point Coriolis to your source, uh, your source cloud, to the instances on your source cloud, and you point Coriolis to your destination cloud, and it will migrate your instances in a, in a single operation. It will do the disk sync, then it will do the uh, VM creation on the destination using the information it has available from the source such as how many CPUs it has, how much disk it has allocated, how much memory, and so on. Replicas are our disaster recovery as a service implementation. It works similarly to migrations, but you get uh, the option to split the migration operation in two parts, one being the initial sync, the actual sync of the disk data for the instances and the metadata about the instances from source to destination and the other operation being the actual creation of the instance from that information that you've synced. This allows you to um, copy over everything relevant about an instance to your destination, and if and when something happens to your source, you can still recover based on the information you already have. Now, you can choose to do as many replicas as you'd like for a single VM. You can choose to run those replicas as much as you'd like, so keep the, the information up to date, so to speak. And it also allows you to do a practice run of your disaster recovery scenario where you can choose to instantiate the instances on your destination, check that everything works, so you know you're prepared for when disaster strikes. So this is what we'll be focusing on today. So let's go to create a replica. Here you can switch between the two modes. We're just going to leave uh, the replica setting. Click on demo. This is the endpoint we'll be migrating from. So we're going away from OpenStack. 
as a source option, we're we're going to cho choose Ceph snapshots. Snef sh snef, huh. Ceph snapshots are the best way to export an instance from OpenStack. Click Next. Coriolis is now listing instances on your source. So we get these two instances listed here. We're going to choose the OpenSUSE VM one. And let's access that VM first. And it's already running. So let's try to log into it. All right. There's nothing, uh, nothing here yet. So let's create a, a file. Migrating from OpenStack to uh, uh, Harvester. Let's write that to a file. All right. So we have the migrate me text file with a timestamp with the following content. Now we'll be migrating this instance to Harvester. So let's go ahead and continue. Click Next. Choose the Harvester endpoint. Click Next. Here we have a few target options. These are settings specific to, to your Harvester deployment. So this would be the cluster.local in my case, the cluster name. We use the cluster name to create uh, X509 certificates for the various pods we uh, need to deploy to ingest the disk data from the source. This is the image. This is an image that we'll be using. This is a simple service that we wrote to help, to facilitate in the disk transfer to kubevert. The namespace. Uh, this is where your instance will end up, as well as the disks and any resources uh, uh, associated with it. So let's click Next here. Now we're listing the networks. In this stage, you're, you're able to map the actual networks from the source cloud to your destination cloud. So we see that the OpenSUSE VM is connected to the internet. So we only have one NIC on the source, which is connected to this particular network. We want to map that network to the default network in, um, in Harvester. Now, Harvester has uh, leverages Multus, which allows you to have multiple networks. But we only have one created in this case. It is a demo environment, after all. <clears throat> so let's choose that one. Click Next. You can do the same type of mapping for storage as well. So you're able, if you have multiple uh, storage backends in your um, Harvester environment, you can choose which one of those uh, storage backends will be used for this particular instance. And you can do this as a default, a global default. You can do this as a default for a storage backend from the source, in this case, the underscore, underscore, default, underscore, underscore on OpenStack. But we only have one storage class, the Longhorn one. Or you can choose to map individual disks of this instance to, in, to different backends. So for example, if you have uh, Longhorn and a faster or slower uh, storage backend in your Harvester deployment, you can choose to map a disk that you don't necessarily need to be extremely fast on a slower one. Or if you have a slash var disk uh, that needs to be on a very, very fast storage backend, you can choose the fastest storage backend available to you and stuff like this. We click Next. Here we can set a schedule for this replica. Uh, the schedule allows Coriolis to run an execution, a new execution, meaning that it attempts to sync the metadata and the disk data of this instance based on a schedule. You can do this um, uh, in this section. And you can it's a cron-like schedule. We're not going to add one now. But you can allow Coriolis to do this automatically for you, or you can run it yourself manually. It's up to you. Click Next. Here we have a summary of the options that we've chosen so far. We click Finish. And Coriolis will go out and validate all the information we've provided. After it validates and uh, creates uh, uh, the resources, it will start to sync the disk data from source to destination, including the file we created here. Let's do a sync just to be sure that it ends up on disk. All right.
So we'll see a new disk being created here soon. It's deploying the replica disks. This means that Coriolis will create a disk of equal or greater size um, than the one on the source to make sure that all the data from the source fits in. So we created a 10 gigabyte disk here. Now we're deploying some temporary resources, in this case, a container with the uh, disk sync um, service that I've detailed previously. Once that's up, uh, uh, Coriolis will create a snapshot of the disk on the source and sync all that data to the destination. So the pod is running now. It will soon switch to replicate disks. Here we go. So we're doing a snapshot using the Cinder APIs. This is the OpenStack um, block storage service. Then we're reading it using Ceph, directly Ceph. We see that we have roughly 10 gigabytes of data to sync. So we're syncing uh, all those blocks, all, those, all that data of the instance to our destination uh, storage volume. The operation doesn't take much time. As you can see, still, we're running on an Intel NUC with just one gigabit uh, of, uh, of uh, network throughput. It, this should take roughly two and a half minutes to three minutes, I think. Now, it's worth mentioning that you can do a replica of one VM or multiple VMs. In the screen you've seen previously where I selected the OpenSUSE VM, you can choose multiple VMs and they'll be migrated as a group. So if you have a cluster of servers that need to be migrated as a, as a group, you can do that as well. When they, get, um, uh, when they get created on the destination, they also get created as a group. So we're halfway through. Once this finishes, Coriolis will clean up this pod because we won't need it anymore. Then we can proceed to actually migrate the instance to Harvester, as in create the actual instance on Harvester. Right now, we don't have an instance. We are simply migrating the disk data and, um, and the metadata about the instance to your destination. So if you do a kubectl get vm, we only see the Coriolis appliance, the actual software that is running here, but no instance, um, no, this instance is not yet created, the one that we're syncing now. So two minutes, 53 seconds, roughly three minutes will be done with the sync. All right. Now we're going to be deleting this temporary container. And it's gone. And now we can choose to create a migration from this replica. So we have all the disk data available on the destination. Creating a migration no longer involves the source cloud anymore. So if something does happen to your source cloud, you're still able to recover on your destination by clicking Create Migration and the Migrate button. One more thing here. Because we're moving from OpenStack running KVM to Harvester running uh, KubeVirt, which is also KVM based, we can skip OS morphing. Now, OS morphing is the process through which Coriolis makes sure that your instance is suited to boot on a destination cloud. So if you're moving away from, for example, VMware, that's a foreign hypervisor, 
we make sure that your instance has the necessary drivers enabled in order for it to boot on KVM. You're moving away from VMware, so you no longer need the VMware drivers or enablement daemons. We remove those. And you're moving to KVM, which means that virt.io needs to be enabled in the init RD of your uh, virtual machine. And make sure that we also have cloud in it because that's what actually is used on Harvester to provide user data and make sure that everything runs smoothly. So this happens during OS morphing. But because we're moving away from OpenStack based on KVM to Harvester also based on KVM, we can choose to skip this step and get a faster boot time. So select Skip OS Morphing. Leave it to know if you're moving from a foreign um, uh, hypervisor or from a platform that no doesn't necessarily run KVM and click Migrate. You will get a small pop-up here that our migration was created. And we, we can view the status of that migration here. So we're validating all the information we already synced to make sure that everything is OK. And we'll be deploying the final instance on Harvester. So we'll soon see it pop up here alongside the Coriolis appliance that is actually running all this. We're deploying all the necessary resources. So we'll soon see a pod being created here, which will take care of the actual VM deployment. Here we go. And this is a pod that will actually create a virtual machine instance here. So we're scheduling it, as you can see. It should pop up here as well. Here we go. So it's starting now. We have an IP allocated. So as soon as it's in running state, we can access the console. It's running now. Let's click on the console. And it's booting the RAM disk. Same thing, thing you, uh, same thing here, you can see. All right, so the machine is booting. Let's make this window a little bit bigger. And we're at the login. Let's try to log in in the console. We see our file here, the one we've created on our source. Let's see if the contents are the same. And they are. And we should be able to access this VM via SSH as well. So let's try open SUSE at and here we go. We've successfully migrated our instance from OpenStack to Harvester and we've accessed it successfully. All the files that we created uh, on the machine in OpenStack are present on this instance. So that's it for our demo. See you next time.